Hey guys, welcome back to Cool Bike Projects. On this week's episode, I wanna take on the topic of how to check out your bike after a big ride, or how to check out your bike before you have your next big ride. Now, a couple weeks ago, I had a chance to go down to Southern Utah with my brother, and we had a blast. There were some awesome trails, pretty aggressive stuff for us. And after returning from the trip, I realized a couple things were not working quite right. Enough that I thought, this would make a good video. So I thought I'd kind of go over a modern bike and talk about some of the things we can do for basic maintenance and how to check things to make sure that the bike is safe and ready for the next big ride. Okay, so one of the first things I noticed was that my crank arm and my bearings were feeling way too tight. Normally, if the wheel was off here, you'd feel little to no resistance. And with this on there, I could feel there was quite a bit of tension. So just checking the crank arms back and forth, I could tell something was over tightened here. And here you have two sets of pinch bolts that are supposed to be torqued to a specific ratio. And my suspicion was that when the bike was assembled, they had over tightened the retaining bolt. So the first thing I'm gonna check here is the tension on that retaining bolt. This is a number five Allen tool. And once I have both these backed off and loose, we're just gonna to check to see what the tension feels like on there. Now on a modern two piece crank set like this, when you release the pressure on the pinch bolt, it actually feels like it's loosening things up a little bit. Here, I could back off the retaining bolt just a little bit and feel quite a bit of looseness opening up. I can also see a small gap in the bottom bracket where just that little quarter turn opened things up. So I'm gonna snug this back just a little bit. Feel the tension again. And then I'm gonna to torque this back down with a torque wrench. Now on the arms here, it is actually rated for 12 to 14 Newton meters. And rather than tighten these down all the way till it clicks, I'm gonna kind of alternate back and forth between one and the next one. And you'll see a little bit of turning each time this happens. Okay. That feels pretty good. So the next thing I noticed was that on some of the climbs, as I would begin to drop down to go faster, the uh, chain wasn't dropping quite as smooth as I wanted. Now, obviously the chain is still filthy dirty. We could have some dust getting inside of here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to double check my limits to make sure everything is correct. Make sure that the derailleur has not been dropped on anything and bent. And then I'll check on the cable to make sure there's been no contamination sucking up red dust and slowing this whole thing down. Looking right down the barrel here, as I begin to shift up and down, I'll actually check to make sure that there is no bend in the derailleur. And the good thing about modern bikes is that the derailleur hangers have been beefed up quite a bit. So where this attaches to the frame, it's much more unlikely to bend one, but you still want to check. Now, assuming there's no tension on the cable here, I'm just eyeballing this up and down to see how straight does this appear to be in line with the cogs. And right now I'm not seeing any bend left or right of the actual derailleur hanger going up or back this way here. Now, next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and shift it up from the lowest cog to the biggest cog. And right now there's no issue of it climbing going up just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and check this manually by pushing up on the spring and checking my limit screws. There's two of them, and on this style derailleur here, these are three millimeter Allen ones. So on my limit screws, I can back these off by turning left or tighten them down to the right here. And I'm just checking to make sure that my limit lines up well underneath this cog. That's pretty good there. Again, just checking to see how this thing lies up down below. 
This left one here, as I begin to tighten it, you can actually see the derailleur heading up the cassette. And if I do this too much, one way or the other, you'll hear it start to miss shift. All that's left to check is the tension to see how much cable is being pulled as it goes up or as it comes down. So down to the very bottom cog, I'll spin this slowly, shifting up just one cog at a time. And right now it's shifting up just fine. And then coming down, it should drop about the same speed. I hesitated there just a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up the cable. In this case, I'm gonna turn the barrel some derailleurs have in the back. In this case, it's all up with the front shifter here. But I'm going to turn the barrel to loosen it up a little bit. So that it drops just as easily as it climbs up. And that feels pretty good. Now, just for a safety check, I'm going to check the torque of all of my pivot bolts, including my through axles on this wheel. Right here, it says this is rated for 12 Newton meters. Using my other larger park tool torque wrench, it's set to 12. And we are still there. Okay, checking the same thing on the front here. Here I have a through axle on the front side. The rating on this one here is 9 to 13 Newton meters. We'll do kind of the same thing here, just under 12. Some of this is a little bit overdone for me, but here it says 5.2 Newton meters. And this is a four millimeter. Recently, I swapped out my wheel set with a nice wheel set from a friend. And while they are really nice tires on here, the sealant has not been replaced in at least 18 months. So we're gonna show you how to add sealant to your tubeless tires. Okay, so here's what comes inside the kit. You have a valve stem remover. You have your applicator bottle, which will fill up. And then we have our sealant, which I'm sure will have to shake up quite a bit. Put our valve cord back inside of there. And I'm going to hold on to this while I turn it so it doesn't spin the, the stem inside of the rim. I prefer to do it this way since the tire is already seated on the rim. So I'm just going to close this off, give it a good spin, and we should be good to go for the next six months. Okay, so mechanically, I'm happy with everything on the bike right now. It's running good. I'm gonna go and give this a quick bike wash just to get some of this red dust off the drivetrain and make sure everything is looking good. And then we'll uh, check out the suspension last of all.
All right, so we're back fresh from our bike wash. And now we're gonna check on two more things. We're gonna lube the chain and then check on the suspension to make sure I have the proper air pressure and then to see if it needs to be cleaned or lubed on these stanchions. This was a brand new chain I put on before my last ride and it had a little bit of waxy buildup from the manufacturing packaging. And so I'm gonna add a little bit of wet lube I know this can be kind of controversial as far as a wet lube, dry lube, which brand, but for the sake of this, I want to add a little bit of a light wet lube to work its way inside of the individual rollers here. And then we're going to try to get rid of most of that with the rag. So I drop it into a little bit of a harder gear. And now all I'm going to do is rotate the bike backwards as I put this on the chain. So I'm simply gonna rotate that about five or six turns to let that work its way through and then wipe off the excess. And then on the sides here, very lightly. Okay, so just using a clean rag, I'm just kind of checking around the seal here on the air shock to make sure there's not a bunch of stuff left over. I always like to inspect the seals around here and make sure that in the case of Southern Utah, we don't have a bunch of red dust still collected on the bottom here. Most modern seals do a great job of keeping the dirt and debris out, but I am going to look very carefully for any scratches or marks on the stanchions because that can introduce a lot of problems later on as it, as it cycles its way up and down inside the fork. People do ask though, what can you use for a lubricant on this in between cycles of, of actually servicing the fork? This is one of many brands out there, but WPL makes a great lubricant. And before a ride, if you'll deposit just a small ring of this above the stanchions, and then we'll actually cycle that up and down inside of the fork a couple times. And this gets down just beyond the foam seals. At the same time, this is not something you do all the time. This is something I'm gonna do because I had a pretty hard ride on dry, dusty trails. And I just wanna make sure that I've got some fresh lubricant down inside of the foam rings. And occasionally you'll actually see a line of cleaner part of the fork with any dust or debris that's come up from the inside of that. You then take a simple clean rag and wipe off any excess. So the last thing I'm gonna do is air up this fork just a little bit more than I had it. Rock Shocks and other companies do a good job of putting labels on the back of the forks that show the rider weight, as well as how much PSI should be in here for the rider. I'll just cycle that up and down real quick. Yep, that feels better. So this was meant to be just kind of a quick overview of how to check your bike after a hard ride or how to prepare your bike for the next big ride. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.